on this episode of Rock River Rails, I'll show you my point of view from Galesburg Railroad Days 2023. I began the day rail fanning the Galesburg Amtrak platform, and it didn't take very long to see some action. A yard drag made its way out of the yard, and then shoved back as a manifest train passed by. Twenty twenty three's static display was forty five sixty two. The locomotive has been owned by BNSF and is now spending its time as a leaser unit. Amtrak Midwest was up next making its station stop in Galesburg. The lighting on this side of the tracks wasn't very ideal, so I would move to the southern sunlight after the Amtrak departure. BNSF 5396, SC44-9W, and BNSF 9202, and SD70 Ace led this manifest out of Galesburg. The weather for the annual Galesburg event was hot and sunny with a high of 95 degrees. I filmed from under a tree which provided shade and much needed relief from the hot sun bearing down. Railroad Days here in Galesburg features a carnival, market, live music, 
model train show, railroad museum tours, BNSF rail yard tours, and much more. My plan was to do some rail fanning and go on the BNSF VIP yard tour later in the day. Next up was the yard drag again, performing another switching move. The power consisted of BNSF 1905, an SD40-2 snoot, and BN54, a TEB C6 slug unit. With the drag out of the yard complete, the train shoved back into the yard and I got another look at the unique power performing the movements. A neat aspect about rail fanning near the station is you're able to catch both freight and Amtrak passenger trains. I'm more of a freight train rail fan, but I still film passenger trains along with everything I see while rail fanning. Lots of folks ask me, why do you film Amtrak or Metra trains? And I always tell them, that serious rail fan videographers film everything because one day they won't be around any longer to film. Case in point, these two locomotives have their days numbered. 816 built as a P40DC and later upgraded to P42DC specifications and 196 current and built as a P42DC would both be retired as part of Amtrak's plans to phase out their P42 fleet. As I waited for the BNSF VIP yard tour, I caught a few trains from the Amtrak platform as the sunlight was much better here later in the day.
the school bus provides a shuttle for the BNSF yard tours. Five bucks for the basic tour and 30 for the VIP tour of the diesel shop and the hump tower. Auto racks were up next, being pulled by GE Power. Check out the nose job on 4285. It must have had some nose damage repaired. This train was all bare tables, headed to where they would be needed next. Amtrak made another station stop, which would be my last catch at this location before heading on the VIP yard tour.
The first stop on the VIP tour was the BNSF Hump Yard and Tower. At a hump yard, a string of various cars are pushed over a grade known as the hump where gravity guides the cars downhill towards their destination tracks. The squealing noise is caused by what are known as retarders. They slow the cars down to a specific speed as they roll down the hump. The speed of the cars must be regulated according to whether they are full or empty, heavy or light freight, and other factors that come into play. Having this kind of access post 9-11 is pretty rare, and this is my second year taking advantage of the VIP tour. The BNSF Galesburg Yard is one of their busiest hump yards in the country. They have set numerous records here for number of cars sorted within a specific time frame. These folks know their jobs and know how to do them well.
Our time here was limited, so that's a wrap of watching the hump yard action. We would head inside the hump tower next. Although the VIP tour consists of going to the top floor of the hump tower where live operations are taking place, no filming or photo taking is allowed. This footage is strictly from the ground floor of the building. The first floor has offices and the walls are lined with achievements and records that the Galesburg Yard holds. The entrance hallway has company values and principles hung on the walls as a reminder of what BNSF stands for. With a parting shot of the hump tower, we would jump back on the bus and head over to the diesel shop. I caught some of the power outside the diesel pit and then it was time to head inside the shop with the tour group. Fifty six thirty one, a GE AC forty four hundred CW was being worked on in the pit. The locomotive is on a short term lease to Metrolink, a commuter rail operator in Southern California. Why, you ask? Your guess is as good as mine. Fourteen sixty seven an EMD SD sixty M was also in the pit. With the side panels open, 
I got a close-up look at the power plant. The shop was very clean and well organized. These folks run a tight ship, as expected by a class one operator. Seventy three forty four, a GE ES forty four DC was the final locomotive I'd get to see up close in the pit. The locomotive was built in 2009. After one last shot of the diesel shop, I would head outside for a better look around. The first thing that caught my attention was Santa Fe 876, a C40-8W built in 1993. The locomotive has reached the end of its service life and after leaving Galesburg, it was headed to Eltex to be scrapped. The end of the line for a legendary locomotive that served its time for the railroad. The fueling area was neat to see, and I caught this SD70 Mac along with several other locomotives staging up for fuel. Looking at the diesel shop from the outside really gives a good perspective on how large the building really is. locomotives as far as the eye can see. I could spend a whole day here observing and if the tour is offered again in 2024 you can bet I'll be back. A string of locomotives, stages for fuel, with some foreign power. I would have liked a better shot of the Ferromex unit, but I'll take what I can get.
the VIP yard tour came to an end, and it was a fantastic experience. I would like to thank BNSF for allowing rail fans a unique opportunity to tour their facilities, and also a big thank you to our tour guides for coordinating the tour and showing us all around. I hope to visit again in 2024. I got back on the bus and had plans to do a little more rail fanning at Peck Park before hitting the road to head home. The first train at Peck Park had an SD70 Executive Mac trailing third up front. This one was all grain cars. Train symbol G K K E K M L Kankakee, Illinois to Kingsmill, Texas. Next was Amtrak Midwest with a nice horn show. The park is a great rail fanning location, especially with the over-under action of the Chillicothe and Mendota subdivisions.
BNSF 4712 at GE C44-9W was a nice catch on this Z train. This would be my final catch of the day, as the train would go into emergency after breaking a knuckle. Thanks for watching another episode of Rock River Rails.